Hi LEGO fans, I'm back with the fourth in a series of 2019 LEGO Harry Potter set reviews. I've already reviewed set number 75948 Hogwarts Clock Tower, 75945 Expecto Patronum, 75946 the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge, and today we're doing Hagrid's Hut again! I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing set number 75947, Hagrid's Hut Bookbeak's Rescue from LEGO Harry Potter. When it comes to LEGO Harry Potter, Hagrid's Hut is a bit of a recurring theme. It first appeared in the 299 piece 4707 Hagrid's Hut in 2001. It got a reboot in 2004 with the 302 piece 4754 set. And again in 2010 with the 442 piece 4738 set. A tiny version of Hagrid's Hut also appeared with the 71043 Hogwarts Castle set last year in 2018. In this latest 2019 version, we're recreating Hagrid's Hut from the Prisoner of Azkaban. It's the one where Harry and Hermione use the Time Turner to travel back in time and rescue Buckbeak the Hippogriff from the Executioner. The 496 piece part count includes six minifigures. Rubius Hagrid, Walden McNair the Executioner, Minister of Magic Cornelius Oswald Fudge, Hermione Jean Granger wearing the Time Turner, Ronald Billius Weasley wearing a goofy smile, and of course Harry James Potter. We also have a very good looking Bookbeak the Hippogriff, and of course the latest version of Hagrid's Hut. I actually have the 2001 version and the 2010 version in my collection. I'll be showing those to you later in the video. Just like the 2010 version, this set includes a light brick, and yes, batteries are included. The box art on this set is particularly pleasing, and I like the way the Lego version of Hagrid's Hut has been transplanted onto the scenery from the movie. Flipping over to the back of the box reveals many of the secrets that lie within. Hagrid's Hut opens up to reveal a detailed interior, including a desk with a copy of the Daily Prophet and a candle, Hagrid's dining table complete with teapot, and a light brick used to illuminate the fire which Hagrid uses to hatch dragon eggs. Just don't tell Dumbledore! Finally we have the pumpkin patch where Buckbeak is chained up awaiting his fate. Despite this being yet another reboot of a theme that's been done before, I'm actually quite looking forward to this build. So let's open up this box and see what we've got inside. It's kind of annoying that we have these punchy tabs, I don't like these, but here we go. Here's everything that came inside the box. We have three numbered bags of Lego, a 118 page instruction booklet, one boil in the bag book beak, and the inevitable terror that is the sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build set number 75947, Hagrid's Hut Book Beak's Rescue, and today this is going to be a 60 second speed build. And here is the completed 75947 Hagrid's Hook Book Beaks Rescue. Build time today was just over 44 minutes and I am totally in love with this set, it's awesome. We've got a lot to get through and unfortunately I don't own a time turner, so let's get to it. We're going to start by taking a look around the outside of Hagrid's Hut, poke around in the interior and see if we can find the chocolate frog, then we'll take a look at Book Beak in the pumpkin patch, and finish up with a detailed look at the six minifigures that come with the set. I did say earlier in the video that Hagrid's hut opens up to reveal the interior. I must have been hit by a rogue confundus charm because clearly this is two houses bolted together. There is no join in the middle and if you try and fold it you're going to end up breaking it. What we do have is yet another fantastic recreation of Hagrid's hut. 
This is the fifth version, so it's no surprise LEGO are getting good at making these. We'll take a look at the 2001 version, the 2010 version, and the teeny tiny 2018 version later in the video. If you like large stickered panels, you're going to love Hagrid's hut. For starters, we have a large stickered panel with lots of rock and moss detail. To some degree, Hagrid's hut is modular. I mean, you can take the two halves of the hut apart easily, but it's not entirely clear why we have these holes on the side here. I guess if you wanted to, you could buy another one of these and bolt them together. But then it wouldn't look like Hagrid's hut from the movie. The exterior rockwork gives Hagrid's hut a really nice rustic charm. There's a mashup of light and dark grey elements, leaves and vines sprouting from everywhere, and the same rustic latticework windows you'll find in the Hogwarts sets. In terms of the build technique, I really like the way the cheese slopes have been used at the side here to fill in the gap. That's super attention to detail. Here we have Hagrid's front door with a really nice wood grain finish. Unfortunately, that's a super scary stickered element with a cutout for the doorknob. But at least you can use the doorknob to open the door. We'll step inside in just a moment. Between the two halves of the building, we have the same architectural details and the addition of an opening window. The other side of Hagrid's hut is essentially a smaller version of the same building. We have the same front door with the same frustrating stickering and some more textured mossy detail around the corner. This time it's on one of those prefabricated panels with the cutout window. Probably the most challenging part of recreating Hagrid's hut in LEGO is the roof. Of all the Hagrid's hut sets LEGO have ever made, I think this is probably closest to the movie. The 2010 version was a little bit boxy and LEGO took a very unusual approach with the 2001 version. We'll take a closer look at that later in the video. The 2019 version relies on segmented panels which come together in the middle. To add to the rustic charm, we have some more foliage, and we have some sand green elements which gives a nod to the earlier Harry Potter sets. You might recall that the earlier Hogwarts castle had a green roof for some reason. Both roofs culminate in a cone-shaped element with a small spire. On the roof of the main structure, we have a little chimney. You'll notice the roof panel this is attached to isn't quite flush. That's for good reason. We'll take a look at what this does in just a moment. Before we do, let's take a poke around inside Hagrid's gaff. Hagrid is well known for his love of all magical creatures, including acromantulas. With that in mind, we have a spider hanging from the eaves. Within the smaller part of the house, we also have a desk and chair complete with candle and a printed 2x2 copy of the Daily Prophet. It seems they're running an exclusive on the boy who lived, Harry James Potter. Also in the corner, we have a treasure chest that hides a tasty treat. Hidden within is our very own chocolate frog. Personally, I found this one a little bit too crunchy. The other half seems to be where Hagrid spends most of his time and keeps most of his stuff. There's a table and chair complete with teapot, although I can't see this being much use for Hagrid as the minifigure cannot possibly sit down. There's a sweeping brush in case Fang knocks something over, but come to think of it, we don't get a Fang in this set. Hanging from the rafters, we have a number of useful household items. Over to the left, we have a meat cleaver, a pail and a whip. And then for some culinary action, we have a spoon and a skillet. Over in the corner we have Hagrid's favourite armchair and a sack that looks perfect for smuggling some clandestine magical creatures. Over in the dark corner at the back we have a chest containing some items. The shovel is understandable but I'm sure there's a story behind that pink umbrella. So this is the pink umbrella that also doubles up as Hagrid's wand. Now the story goes that Hagrid was expelled from Hogwarts when he was a student for opening the Chamber of Secrets. Generally speaking, if you're expelled from Hogwarts, they snap your wand. Rather than give up his wand, Hagrid keeps it disguised as an umbrella and it comes in handy from time to time. And finally, for the interior of Hagrid's hut, we have the fireplace. It looks like Hagrid's up to his old tricks again, trying to hatch a dragon egg. Perhaps he's confusing himself with Daenerys Targaryen. How do, Harry? I be Hagrid of the House Gryffindor. The first of his name, the Unburnt, King of the Forbidden Forest, the Great Lakes and the Wizards. King of Marine, Carl of the Great Grass Sea, Protector of the Realm, King of the Seven Kingdoms, Breaker of Chains, and Father of Dragons. You might remember from earlier that the chimney had an odd function. It activates the light brick inside the fireplace. Although with the lights on it's not very impressive. Maybe if we kill the lights. I really don't want to change all of the camera settings so you can see a faint glow, but trust me it's not very impressive. So that was Hagrid's hut, and while I really like the look and feel of the outside of the building, I've seen better interiors in older versions. I'll show you a couple of those in just a moment. But before we do, we need to take a look at my favourite piece of this set. 
That's right, it's Buckbeak the Hippogriff, the terrifying creature that broke Malfoy's arm. Shame it didn't break his leg as well. But the great thing about this set is not only do we get Buckbeak the Hippogriff, we also get the pumpkin patch where he's waiting out his final days. It's a fairly simple but colourful addition to the set and I love the fact that we get four of those pumpkin elements. As well as the custom moulded pumpkins, we also get some smaller squash made out of minifigure heads. These are growing from vines both in the dark green and light green variants. But no amount of pumpkins can take away from the fact that there's a stake driven into the ground for a reason. It's to this that Buckbeak has been chained while he awaits McNair the Executioner. It's one of the longer Lego chains and allows Buckbeak a degree of movement. But ultimately Buckbeak is trapped by the chain around his neck and only a brave time travelling witch or wizard can rescue him. We'd best take a look at poor old Beaky before he gets the chop. For the most part he's designed like a standard Lego horse but there are some key differences. The first of those being the head which is very much the head of a bird. Like the rest of the body it's made out of light grey plastic but we do have some overprinted detail. We've got a dark grey beak, bright yellow raptor eyes and white and grey detail for the crest. As well as the printed highlights we also have some really nice moulding. The wings are removable and I'm going to do that so we can take a closer look. Buckbeak's rear end looks very much like the rear end of a horse complete with tail. But those front legs are very different. The head is articulated and allows Buckbeak to bow to people who show him respect and courtesy. Of course you can always recreate the scene where Harry Potter takes Buckbeak for a spin or use the serious black minifigure from the Expecto Patronum set to escape the Dementors. This is a really good recreation of Buckbeak and I think they've captured the character perfectly. The wings are nicely detailed and the head is about as good as it gets. This is not the first time we've seen Buckbeak recreated in Lego. You might want to cover your eyes for this bit. This is the 2004 Buckbeak from set number 4750 Draco's Encounter with Buckbeak. It's hideous! But the 2019 Buckbeak is a complete contrast, he's great. I also love the fact that it comes with the pumpkin patch that we saw in the movie. What I don't like are those unwelcome visitors. In total we have six minifigures in this set including Executioner Walden McNair and Cornelius Fudge the Minister for Magic. This guy Walden McNair was a particularly nasty piece of work. He worked at the Ministry of Magic as an executioner but he was also one of Lord Voldemort's Death Eaters. In fact you may have seen him in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. He was one of the Death Eaters in the Department of Mysteries. In fact you can see him here holding Luna Lovegood. McNair was also seen in the Great Hall during the Battle of Hogwarts in Deathly Hallows Part 2. He was actually thrown against a wall by Rubius Hagrid who obviously remembered his threatening actions towards Buckbeak. You may remember from the movie that McNair was carrying a very long and threatening looking axe. This is that axe recreated in Lego but rather than create a new axe head, Lego have actually used a few different elements here. We've got a pretty traditional axe head at the top there and then snapped onto this shaft further down we have a clip and an ice skate which kind of pushed together to make it look like it's one long blade. The effect is okay, I would have preferred to have seen Lego create a new element for this to be honest. McNair is wearing his black executioner uniform which is sleeveless as you can see here we've got the flesh toned arms and the black gloves on there and then some really nice printing on the front it's kind of uh, black and grey but we do have printing down the front of the top here and then onto the pants which looks great and around the back we do have just some creasing and then a couple of uh, tears there it looks like he's been wearing this for a while maybe this executioner's uniform has seen some business he looks particularly menacing wearing this executioner's hood and I'm pretty sure this is the same element they use for the Dementors. It's a great element and then has a cutout in the front so you can see the face. The face is kind of printed onto this black minifigure head. We do have some detail so he's kind of wearing a mask under there or I guess this would be part of the hood. Uh, you can see his eyes peeking through, looks very very happy in his work. And then around the back there we do have a little bit of printing on the back, um, just some more I guess creases and maybe tears there on the back of the head. This is a super nice minifigure and that is the Executioner or Walden McNair. Next we have the hapless Dark Lord denying Minister for Magic, Cornelius Oswald Fudge. He's wearing these plain black dress pants, really I guess he should have pinstripes down the front, uh, but then we've got this printed torso which shows his jacket, he's got a vest underneath and then a white shirt, green tie and if you can see there's a tiny little bit of metallic detail there, almost like a, a badge on his lapel. 
We've got a very solemn expression here, as you'd expect when he's going to execute Buckbeak, and then this really cool bowler hat. No expression around the back of the head, because you can see the back of his head, but we also get some printed detail on the back there, just for the creases on the back of his jacket. This guy is an absolute buffoon and spent more time smearing Harry than dealing with what he should have done, which is to uh, realise that the Dark Lord was back and deal with him. But that is the ex-minister for magic, Cornelius Oswald Fudge. As well as the two bad guys, we also have our four heroes. Hermione Jean Granger, Rubius Hagrid, Harry James Potter, and Ronald Billius Weasley. I know I've said this in previous Harry Potter set reviews, but I really like the new Hermione minifigure. She's holding one of these new style pale brown ones, and then we've got these shorter format legs on here, which are in this pale blue colour, or I guess mid blue colour. But the really nice thing here is the printing on the torso. She has this pink hoodie on with the pocket at the front and then a zipper down there. And then we also have printing on here for the time turner. This is how Hermione manages to get to three classes at once. I believe she does divination, muggle studies and arithmancy on the same day at 9am. And that's why she needs this magical time turner to get around. It also comes in super useful for rescuing Sirius Black from the Dementors and rescuing Buckbeak from having his head chopped off. The facial expression is really, really nice, but I do believe this is the same facial expression we get in other sets. Looks very calm, very demure, and then I love the freckles on there. We do have another expression around the back, which is slightly more snarly, angry Hermione, and then a little bit of printing on the back there just for the contours of the body and a little bit of creasing. We do have Hermione's kind of a let loose hair. This looks great, really sleek all the way down the back. Definitely not as bushy and curly as it's described in the books, but that is a super awesome Hermione minifigure. Moving on to Harry Potter, he's changed quite a lot since the 2010 Hagrid's Hut. Firstly, you'll notice he's got the shorter format movable legs and it must be laundry day at Hogwarts because he's wearing his khakis. If anything, I actually prefer the torso print on the older Harry Potter. It's just more crisp. Although the colour of the top Harry's wearing is almost the same, we don't have the hoop design around it this time. The facial expression on the 2019 Harry Potter is a step up. He looks a little bit younger and more in keeping with the movie. And I love the cutout in the hair, which allows us to see the lightning shaped scar. The hair is a really nice upgrade and I love the amount of texture that's in here. It really gives Harry that shaggy look that he should have. If we take off the hair, we can also take a look at the expression around the back, which I believe is the same one we got with the previous two sets. And that shows a very much more consternated Harry. The last major difference is pretty obvious. The old Harry Potter had an absolutely enormous wand and that's something I didn't think I'd ever say on YouTube. The new style ones are much more in keeping with the proportions of the minifigure. Speaking of proportions, here's Hagrid. I don't think he's quite the giant he was made out to be in the books, but he certainly stands a lot taller than Harry and Hermione. Compared to the 2010 Hagrid, he's a little bit smaller but more screen accurate. There really is nothing new to show here, it's the same Hagrid we got with the Hogwarts Great Hall in 2018, even down to the lantern that he's carrying, which is a really nice element nonetheless. If we take that out of the way, we can take a look at the printing on the torso, which is really nice. We've got this pale brown coat, uh, a brown undercoat, and then the belt with the shiny belt buckle, which you might be able to see in the light there. Really nice beard and hair all in one thing. And then a kind of funny expression. It looks really weird without the hair. But that is Hagrid. Certainly got some, uh, some wrinkles around the eyes there. And we don't have an expression on the back there. So let's pop that back on. We do have some legs at the bottom here. And these are the child legs. These are the tiny format legs. He can't actually sit down. So uh, his dining table is pretty much not useful to him and then we've got these uh, larger format arms because obviously this is a custom body piece he is a great looking Hagrid even if he's a little bit too small and finally for the minifigures we have Ronald Billius Weasley who's holding one of these mid brown wands he has the short format legs this time in grey and then a kind of casual sweater top here with a t-shirt underneath we've got a red t-shirt which of course a redhead should never wear because it drowns out the facial colour and then around the back we've got some creases along the back there very very simple printing on this Ronald Weasley now the facial expression is actually the same facial expression we got with the Goblet of Fire set the one on the left is from the Hogwarts Clock Tower set, and the one on the right comes from Hagrid's Hut. 
You'll also notice the hair is slightly different. This one is from the younger Ron, and then this one is from the Goblet of Fire, where Harry and Ron grow up a little bit and get a trendy haircut. So although these look very similar from the front, there is a little bit more style to this one, which came with the Yule Ball scene. Uh, really nice Ronald Weasley minifigure. And just before we wrap up, let's take a look at that expression. Yeah, looking very much less happy. And that, again, is the same expression we got on the earlier minifigure. We don't have a lot of different variations of expressions in these 2019 sets. There's no doubt that the 2019 Hagrid's Hut adds great value to the LEGO Harry Potter collection. But I did promise to show you some older versions. So let's use that time turner and wind back the clock. This is set number 4707, Hagrid's Hut from 2001. You'll notice that it looks very different, and that's probably for good reason. 2001 was the year of release for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Or as normal people call it, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Go crazy in the comments, people. It's very likely that the LEGO designers who put this together did not know how it was going to look in the movie. In fact, I'm not even sure if Hagrid's Hut was in the first movie. If you can remember, perhaps you can let me know in the comments below. The first thing you'll notice about the minifigures is they have yellow faces. These guys are 18 years old and predate the flesh-coloured heads we get today. Hagrid again is a little bit bigger than the current version and I definitely prefer the 2019 version. I've got to say I really like the old Dumbledore, this is so cool. In particular I love the way the beard and the hair are separate elements and they kind of meet up in the middle. Although very old and very interesting, these are not particularly valuable minifigures. Both appeared in four sets and they're not particularly rare. We also get this rather interesting rat trap which has an interactive function. Perched on top we have a completely white version of Hedwig and some kind of radioactive arachnid. I'd like to say the white rat is probably going to be Scabbers, but I'm guessing this set is way too early. Other accessories with the set include this small hand cart and an old-fashioned lantern. The hut itself is a rather interesting LEGO building. We've got this old-fashioned and ornate front door, a really nice printed panel, no stickering for 2001 LEGO Harry Potter sets, and we even have an ornate prefabricated piece at the end which holds a little secret. Yes, we have Norbert the dragon hiding away. We're going to see him again in just a moment. The roof is by far the most interesting part about this build. It's made from concertina printed plastic and it's held together at the top by an elastic band. The elastic band has definitely seen better days but the plastic roof is perfect. It hooks onto mounting points at the bottom and then at the top it's perforated with studs and these just hold the elastic band in place. It's ingenious and very effective, but not very Lego. With the elastic band removed, the entire hut opens up, revealing all of the interior goodness. We've got a barrel containing a pickaxe and a hand axe, and then we've got a random orange flame. There's also a really nice sideboard, complete with some potions and a pair of shiny keys. We have another owl, because apparently those guys like to hang out at Hagrid's, and a fireplace with fun interactive function. You can angle down the grate, and then turn the chimney to reveal Norbert the dragon. Norbert is a really nice Lego element, especially in this sand green colour, and has a surprising amount of detail. Above the fireplace we have Hagrid's mug, and then there is what I presume to be a seat which hides a little secret. It seems that Hagrid's hiding a book about dragons. This is one of the older Lego book elements, and has some really nice printing of a dragon on the front. We also have some detail on the side of the spine, and then also some detail on the back showing a spider in a cobweb. I was so lucky to find the 2001 Hagrid's Hut in such great condition. It's definitely one of the highlights of my growing Lego Harry Potter collection. But this is not the only other Hagrid's Hut I have. This is the 4738 Hagrid's Hut from 2010, which also includes a rather creepy Aragog. This came with four minifigures, including Hagrid, Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, and Ronald Weasley. Again, the 2010 Hagrid was a little bit taller than the one we got in 2018. I definitely think the new Hagrid looks a lot better with the brown beard and hair element. Harry, Ron, and Hermione all came with the full-size movable legs, and each minifig used exactly the same Gryffindor uniform torso. In fact, the only difference between the three is their face and hair elements. Ron has this fantastic expression which perfectly illustrates his terror at seeing Aragog. He also has this great ginger hair, of course he's a Weasley, and we do have another expression around the back, which is a slightly more docile Ron. 
I don't like the Hermione expression quite as much as the 2019 version, but it is still pretty good. And she's got a good hair piece as well with the brown sleek hair, and then it's kind of tied at the back here. It's a really nice hair element. And then we do have a slightly more cross Hermione expression at the back. And then, of course, we have the classic Harry Potter, and I'm sure Lego made millions of these. He's got the expression there, which is very smiley, got the little lightning scar hiding under the hair. And then we have this kind of uh, shaggy haircut, very black. And then around the back, we do have a slightly more disconcerted Harry Potter. He's looking a little bit upset there. Aragog is certainly an interesting looking spider. Frankly, I don't think this is nearly as good as the one we got last year in 2018. The faces are printed one by two, and we have a pair of mean-looking fangs. We also have a rather nice printed element for the thorax. But the really interesting thing about the Aragog build is those legs which are made out of swords. These are on ratchets, which helps you to pose the spider. It certainly makes a very original build, and is definitely not one for the arachnophobes. Hagrid's hut is a good-looking build, but very different from the 2019 version. This is much more boxy. Carrying on the spider theme, we also have some of Aragog's acromantula friends on the roof. I put them there to keep them safe and sound. We also have a good amount of dust. This thing has been on display for about the last decade. Around the front, we have another elaborate door. And just outside, we have a really nice jack-o'-lantern printed element. By 2010, LEGO are starting to use stickers to embellish the designs. Here and on the chimney, we can see some brick detailing. I'm not sure these are in the right place, but we got a couple of really nice printed discs for the mushrooms. There's also a second door, and an open window with some really nice gold shutter elements. Hagrid's hut opens up to reveal all of the interior features. This also gives us a chance to see how the sectional roof is put together. Basically, we have some panels mounted on ratchets which just join together like so. There's a table and chairs for hosting friends, and useful clips in the rafters for holding things like dumbbells and keys. I'm not totally sure those are the right things, but there you go. On the other side of the hut, we have Hagrid's fireplace and an uninvited guest. There's also a neat feature which allows you to rotate the cauldron and put it over the fire. In the fireplace, we have some red and orange transparent elements to give the effect of fire. There's also a light brick which sadly did not pass the test of time. Does anybody know if you can replace the batteries in these? Above the fireplace are some assorted potions. And in the back corner, we have one of those magically moving portraits of a wizard. This one, of course, is a sticker and doesn't move. Just like the 2001 version, this is not exactly screen accurate. The 2019 version does a much better job. But when it comes to the interior, I think this is a little bit better than the 2019 version. Unfortunately, I don't have the 4754 Hagrid's hut from 2004. But I do have something a little extra to show you. Last year, I reviewed the 6020 piece 71043 Hogwarts Castle. This recreated Hogwarts Castle in micro scale. And with that set, we got a micro scale Hagrid's hut. This is considerably smaller than the minifigure scale version, and that's because it's designed to be the same scale as these guys. As they say, it's small but perfectly formed. Outside, we have the pumpkin patch. There are two connected buildings, complete with chimney. And we even have Aragog lurking around the back of the hut. That ruddy Snape, he's gone too far this time. So that was set number 75947, Hagrid's Hut Book Beaks Rescue from LEGO Harry Potter. I was a little bit sceptical when LEGO created yet another version of Hagrid's Hut. But honestly, I think this has turned out really well. The exterior appearance of the hut fits really well with the movie. And I love the additional theming of Book Beak with the pumpkin patch. And the quality of the minifigures. Of all the minifigures, I think Hermione is probably my favourite. I love the torso print with the Time Turner. And it's also great to get Cornelius Fudge and McNair the Executioner. Hagrid seems to be exactly the same version we got last year. It's definitely a great minifigure, and it's interesting to see how Hagrid has developed over the years. I don't think the interior was quite as good as the 2010 version, but it was perfectly adequate. The light brick was a bit of a gimmick and gave the roof a bit of a funky look. Honestly, I think the set would be better off without it. But overall, this is a really nice set and a great addition to the 2019 LEGO Harry Potter lineup. There will be more Harry Potter set reviews coming up soon. I'm about to start work on the night bus. And then we've got a couple of other interesting sets, which I believe are coming out in August. You'll be seeing those reviewed on this channel, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. I also have my fingers crossed for a release of the Harry Potter Series 2 minifigures. Those haven't been announced yet, so this is pure speculation, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see a set soon. 
In particular, I'd like to see a Karkaroff minifigure, and it'd be great to get another Ginny Weasley. She's awesome! Which Harry Potter characters are you hoping to see in Series 2? As always, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Above all, I really hope you enjoyed this LEGO Harry Potter unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. Also check out the Harry Potter playlist at the end of the video. So thanks a million for checking out this Hagrid's Hut review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.